Okay, this one is going to be really good. Another 10 infamous wrestling receipts. So let's go ahead and watch. One, two, 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 two. The physical nature of wrestling means that the action can very much become all too real, whether the wrestler Brock is laying it in, working one. snug, or throwing a stiff potato. This can happen sometimes by accident, sometimes on purpose, and sometimes accidentally on purpose. We'll look at examples of each Brock today as we highlight 10 more wrestling accident receipts. First, we have a recent example of a ready. receipt that came about following the men's <laughs> war games match at Survivor Series 2022, where the bloodline okay. took on Drew McIntyre, the Brawling Brutes, and Kevin Owens. During the match, Owens slapped Roman Reigns hard in the face. The slap's connection made a wicked sound oh, oh and led to a subsequent slugfest. Roman had a bruise under his left eye afterward and suffered an eardrum injury which may have been a result of Owen's slap. Regardless, Reigns was said to have been legitimately upset with Kevin after the match. However, the oh. tribal chief opted against handing out Owens' receipt during the War Games match. Reigns instead waited until their next encounter oh, on the final the Smackdown of 2022 where Roman teamed with Sami Zayn to face Owens and John Cena. During the bout, Reigns gave Owens a stiff lariat sending KO straight to the mat. Cena's reaction on the apron said it all. Roman with a close line. It was one hell of a shot by the head of the table, but it was Owens who had the last laugh when it came to the match, as it was he and Cena that got the victory. Although he did <gasps> suffer a nasty. What the fuck? It looked like he doesn't have an eyeball. Damn, Roman. He bruised to the eye at the hands of Reigns. Next, we have a receipt that was two and a half years in the making. It all started with the NWO's parody of the Four Horsemen from WCW Monday Nitro mm -hmm. in 1997. Arn Anderson and his wife were unhappy with Kevin Nash's impression of Double A. They took Nash making fun of Arn's drinking habits as a mean-spirited personal attack. The Horsemen were meant to get their revenge on the same night of the parody. However, plans changed. Then, once the Fall Brawl War Games pay-per-view came around, the Horsemen were decisively beaten by the NWO. And with Arn Anderson having retired from the ring earlier that year, it appeared as though the enforcer wasn't going to get any form of payback on Nash. That was until January 2000 when Anderson made a run-in during Nash's match against Bret Hart on Nitro. When Nash was outside the ring, Arn ran down and attacked Kev from behind with a lead pipe. Arn would say that the pipe Seriously? shot was not a receipt for the parody and was instead merely an accidental potato. I don't have to address something from behind with a lead pipe. It's not the way I operate. So if, if he got potatoed, it was purely accidental, which I apologized to him that night. But Kevin Ash disagrees. He hit me with a wrench in Florence. <laughs> You talking about a receipt? <laughs> Lightning bolt <laughs> shot out of my ass. Either way, it was the first time Arn was able to get nah, physical with Nash nah, after the stop, parody, even stop. if it occurred during Me a different storyline a few years later. <laughs> A receipt on its own is bad enough, yeah, okay. but a receipt at the hands of an unprotected steel chair shot yeah, is right. the stuff of nightmares. A receipt of this nature occurred during the Raw of Elimination match at Survivor Series 2004. Maven was assaulted before the match by Snitsky, who landed some stiff shots. When he returned, he went straight for Snitsky. Maven hit a jumping elbow, which hit Snitsky square in the eye. <laughs> This cut Snitsky open and left him with a nasty gash, with blood dripping down his face onto his chest. Since Snitsky was booked to get himself disqualified by hitting Maven with a chair, it was important for Maven to lay it in so that Snitsky had a suitable reason to get his revenge. And even though Maven struck Snitsky by accident, it worked out for the better given the nature of the angle. And Snitsky responded with a thunderous chair shot. <laughs> Snitsky gave out more chair shots to Chris Jericho and Randy Orton. After this, he walked to the back with blood still pouring from his eye. This was Maven and Snitsky's gash. only ever pay-per-view main event. But you have to give them credit as their receipt exchange helped add to the match. Damn, I feel All sorry I for anybody paper, after that. And if he did you give just me a little start bit of, hitting uh, people with chairs. That, a blast from a steel chair was the receipt in the last entry. But our next receipt is the result of a hard chair shot. Occurring on the first SmackDown of 2003, Paul Heyman and Big Show cut a promo, calling out Brock Lesnar, who then appeared on stage only to be attacked from behind by Matt Hardy wielding a chair. The chair shot busted Brock wide open with the back of his head completely covered in blood. Lesnar was quick to get his revenge though, and it came as a result of a vicious clothesline. Hardy and Lesnar then wrestled later in the night. Lesnar refused medical attention and didn't even put on his wrestling gear for the match. Brock gave Matt a merciless beating and a highly entertaining squash. Hardy's follower Shannon Moore also received the pummeling, being hit with an epic S5. <laughs> Hardy was also <laughs> designed. <laughs> Lesnar was quick to get his revenge though, and it came as a result of a vicious clothesline. Shots!
Hardy and Lesnar then wrestled later in the night. Lesnar refused medical attention and didn't even put on his resting gear for the match. Brock Pizza gave Matt a merciless match. beating and a highly entertaining squash. Hardy's shit. follower Shannon Moore also received the pummeling, being hit with an epic F5. Hardy was also given an F5, which earned Brock the victory. Lesnar came across Is like a tough as nails, knee? unstoppable monster, in no small part thanks to Hardy and Shannon Moore, who made the next big thing look like a million bucks. When the Dudley boys joined the WWF in Damn. 1999, they were immediately paired with the Acolytes. The two teams had numerous very physical Y'all saw that and y'all still not being careful with this dude? Like... To ensure that there was no repeat of what happened with the public enemy, the public enemy had previously tried to change the finish of the match with the Acolytes right before they went out. Farouk and Bradshaw then subsequently destroyed them and sent them packing from the WWF. The Dudleys made their presence known during their WWF debut by attacking the Acolytes with 2 by 4s Bubba in particular made sure to lay in, giving Bradshaw two legit smacks one after the other. King the Dudley boys! Bubba hit me so hard with that 2 by 4 I lost feeling in my feet and my hand. Wow. The next week, Farouk and Bradshaw were ready to give it right back to Bubba Ray and Devon when they ran in during an interview segment. Let's look out! Good! The Acolytes! Ah! Farouk and Bradshaw! The Acolytes beat the Dudleys around with 50 gallon drums getting their receipt from the prior SmackDown. They were ready to kill us. They hit the set. They beat the crap out of us. Ron Simmons is picking up a 50 gallon drum. Yeah. A shoot. 50 gallon drum and just having his way with the both of us. These are all live rounds. After the segment was over, both teams shook hands and thanked each other. The Dudley boys had proved <laughs> that they could hang and do business whilst earning the respect of the locker room who were watching on. Celebrities in wrestling can be hit or miss, as seen from the Jackass Crew's appearances in WWE. In 2006, Steve-O enraged Umaga due to not staying down after a beating, instead laughing after being attacked, leading to Umaga legitimately knocking <laughs> Steve-O unconscious. Johnny Knox will have been hoping he fared better than his fellow cast member during his WWE run which began when okay. Knoxville entered the Royal Rumble match in 2022. However, things started with a rough exchange initiated by Knoxville. AJ Styles gave Knoxville one free shot to which Johnny responded with a clubbing forearm. Unlike with Steve-O and Umaga, this was all in good fun, but Knoxville was still owed a receipt. He told Styles to bring it, and the phenomenal one oh. obliged, firing back with a snug clothesline. Knoxville said bring it, and Styles, oh my goodness! Knoxville then ate a frog splash from Montez Ford and was eventually eliminated by rival Sami Zayn. As we've seen from our previous videos, Perry Saturn can certainly dish out a receipt, as was the case when he punished enhancement talent Mike Bell. But some seven months later, Saturn was on hand to deliver more receipts, this time in another physical match versus a local competitor, Brian Gamble, on an episode of WWF Metal in December 2001. The story goes Gamble claimed they were resting in his hometown and had friends and family in the audience, and for that reason, he wanted to get more offense in than a typical jobber would. The match starts off with Gamble performing a hip toss, to which Saturn then responds by asking Gamble, are you trying to shoot on me? Before giving Gamble a strong slap to the face, Gamble replies with a shove only to get annihilated with a massive spear. But there was still more to come, as Saturn also delivered a hard kick to the back. Gamble managed to hit a spinning elbow where he then tried to go for a cover, but Saturn wasn't having any of it. Perry brought Gamble down one more oh, time, fine. allowing Saturn to lock in a submission hold which got the win. It's not known for sure if Gamble truly did go into business for himself, but the match plays out quite differently to a typical enhancement hey. squash, with the wrestlers being on different pages at various points in the match. If you're looking for a wrestler getting angry with his opponent and subsequently assaulting them for real in the ring, then look no further than New Jack. New Jack was up to his old ways during a match for a Florida independent promotion in October 2004. New Jack's opponent was a green wrestler named Hunter Red. The two immediately got off on the wrong foot when Red refused to talk over the match with Jack backstage. Then once the bout began, Hunter Red began laying into the original gangster, nailing him with two stiff potatoes before then trying to manhandle New Jack. Jack responded by pulling out a blade from his pocket and driving it directly into Hunter Red's body nine times. I grabbed a rope and I pulled a knife out and started stabbing him. I stuck him like nine times. What? what the? Wait, oh my! He's stabbing this mother. Run! The few fans in the audience were in complete horror. New Jack had to be pulled away from his opponent by the promoter. New Jack was charged with aggravated battery and faced up to 15 years in prison. However, he was given a lifeline by the victim of his assault, Hunter Red. Red agreed to drop the charges provided he and New Jack turned the incident into an angle and toured around the Florida independent circuit, wrestling matches against one another. New Jack agreed provided Hunter Red dropped the charges first. Once Red did so, Jack left Florida and never spoke to Hunter Red again. He went and dropped the charges. I went home. 
Rikishi's always been known as a fun-loving, jovial character that never failed to entertain the people, so it was a surprise to fans when he lost his cool whilst wrestling a tag match in the WWF's former developmental territory, HWA, in December 2001. Rikishi wrestled against a team featuring Haku and Russ McCullough. A planned spot was to see Russ hold Rikishi in place for a kick from Haku, only for Rikishi to move, leading to McCullough getting accidentally hit instead. The problem was Rikishi was supposed to move to the left, but ended up moving right instead, meaning Haku's kick hit Rikishi hard in the face. This infuriated Big Kishu went to the outside, grabbed a fan's chair and went straight for McCullough. Rikishi rained down chair shot after chair shot, completely bending the chair in half and forcing McCullough to retreat to the back. Rikishi was none too pleased with being potatoed and there was a further altercation once the wrestlers got to the backstage area. It was there that Rikishi and other Samoan wrestlers threatened to beat up Russ. McCullough had already been told that his contract wasn't going to be renewed and he was allowed out of his deal early straight after the match. For our last entry, we go to Japan in 1990, where a huge inter-promotional match for the IWGP <laughs> no, Heavyweight Championship saw All Japan's Stan Hansen challenge New Japan's Big Van Vader in one of wrestling's stiffest ever matches. Even before the match began, Vader suffered a broken nose whilst on the outside after Hansen swung his cowbell at him. He was telling me, he says, you know, you hit the thing, the thing came back broke my nose right off the bat. Once things got underway, the physicality continued with both men hitting each other for real, with Vader in particular landing some very stiff shots. Hansen responded with a melee in the corner, where he ended up sticking his thumb into Vader's eye, causing it to pop out, resulting in an insane visual. Vader showed incredible toughness, pushing his eye back into his socket and holding it in place with his eyelid. The match continued, as did the punishment. The two men beat the holy hell out of each other, with the action eventually spilling to the outside. The match ended in a double count out after both men continued brawling in the crowd. All the bones in, in my face had refused. So I mean my whole all my cheekbone was broken, all this was broken. My whole nose nose was cracked. Oh, Extensive I didn't know surgery all that. was required Ew. on Vader's face following the match. And that brings us to the end of this video. As always if you enjoyed the video be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Being a wrestler sounds really cool and so like some actual factual actual crazy injuries happen to you. And then you just don't want to do it anymore. Um, just all the all the dreams of wanting to be a wrestler just goes out the window. But uh, yeah, that's gonna do it for this reaction, y'all. Leave some comments down below. Let me know what you guys think, and I will see you guys later. Bye.